I am pleased to welcome Dr. Sarah Hudson from Highland Family Medicine to the program. Welcome, doctor. Good morning. So our subject uh, is a challenging one here. Uh, Tuesday this week was Pregnancy and Infancy Loss Remembrance Day. Uh, first of all, why do we recognize a day like this? How common is it? Well, it is incredibly common, and I think that's part of the reason why we do something like this, so that we can help bring some attention to something that people tend not to talk about very much because it's so personal. Okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, the root causes here. What causes a miscarriage? You know, it's... Probably 50% or more of miscarriages are caused by a mistake or an error in the genetic makeup of the fetus. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is really inevitable, but that doesn't make it any easier for somebody who's going through that loss. No, for sure. Uh, and of course, there are uh, losses later in pregnancy as well. Is there anything different you know, that, that causes it later in pregnancy versus earlier, say, in a first trimester? Sure. So end of pregnancy losses tend to be more often uh, problems with them, either the mother's health or problems with the placenta, the part of the organ inside of the uterus that's helping to feed the baby. Now we mentioned, of course, that it's infant loss remembrance as well. About one in every 10 pregnancies is lost early on in, in pregnancy at that beginning part, the first three months. Mm -hmm. And maybe six in a thousand pregnancies end up in a loss towards the end. So the ones at the end are much less common than the ones at the beginning, but some, some sources say up to one in four pregnancies is lost, which is an incredibly huge number, and people tend not to talk about it because it's such a personal experience. Right, until it happens to you, you may not realize just sure. how yeah. uh, common it is. Uh, let's finish with this thought, uh, uh, twofold here. What resources are available for people that go through this type of loss? Uh, if you're a friend or a loved one, what is the right thing to do as you try to comfort somebody that has experienced uh, one of these losses? Sure. Well, I think the important thing is for people who are either concerned that they are going through a loss or, or have gone through one before, for them to seek medical attention because it is really important. There are some physical and emotional mental health things that... that um, that we really can't do much about unless we know what's going on. So it's, I just would urge people to seek attention if they are going through something either physically or, or mentally difficult. And what people can do really is so variable because, you know, obviously everyone is an individual and what their needs are are different. But definitely research shows that people who are isolated or don't have... Um, community resources experience much more profound depression and grief. So I think probably the most important thing is for people to have someone to reach out to them and to remind them that they have someone with them to help. Well, we'll leave it there. Uh, again, a challenging topic, but we appreciate your insight uh, as always. Thanks for coming in. Absolutely. Again, uh, Pregnancy and Infancy Loss Remembrance Day uh, recognized earlier this week. If you missed any of our conversation, we will be sharing it online as well at rochesterfirst.com.